Sizamili has responded to a threat from Bonaboy, responding to a video where Sizamili said he wrote 80% of Bonaboy's hit single on Dilo. Bonaboy um, threatened to deal with Sizamili if he catches him before COVID-19 does. Now, Sizamili has come forward to say that in August 2018, he was invited to a studio session by his record label, Aristocrat, to work on a project with another label mate to feature Bonaboy. According to him, the recording session lasted four days. He also revealed that the beat was made by Kel P at the time for another artist who was yet to voice on the beat. He maintains that he vibed 50 to 60 percent of the song and that Bonaboy definitely changed some words in the vibe laid down for him. He also expressed displeasure at the way Nigerian artists um, react about songwriters working with them, stating that there are several international artists who don't write their songs at all. Yeah. You know, I was privileged to have this minute sometime. That was like two years ago, two years ago on radio way he made this um, disclosure. And it, it actually caused a, a few issues on the blogs, you know, because he said he wasn't supposed to, supposed to disclose the people he writes songs for. And I had a problem with it, like, why? I mean, if you're writing songs for people, then they should be giving you credit. But based on, you know, it, no, it's possible you know. for that to happen if you signed that agreement. Yeah. But yeah. based on what he came out to narrate now, there wasn't an agreement, yeah. which is yeah. why this back and forth is even happening yeah. right now. So he can say it anywhere he wants to say yeah. it. Yeah, but he, in that interview, he also shot himself in the foot because he was like, when, when he was asked straightly, did you write the song? He like he cannot disclose. I like, do you have an NDA? He said no. I like, so if you're writing songs for people and they're not giving you credit, don't you think that takes away from your own intellectual property? And so I don't know what what the what the back the backdrop fallout will have been between him and Bonobo on this. Why he's coming out now to say this? He wasn't coming but, out now. The you know, no, he he's wasn't coming written, out. A video, a video he surface of, yeah. of, an, old of interview an interview at based CTFM on, on, actually. On Bonobo acting like a child and he on said, Twitter, yeah, and he said he wrote um, eighty percent in yeah. that yeah. video. Because even when they said, did you totally write? He said, no, no. I wrote 80%. Yeah. Right? And um, that was when Bonaboy came out to say, oh, if COVID, I don't know how you wish someone that, that if COVID doesn't catch him before he does, then he knows that he's going to deal with him. Which is why Cesamili is coming well, out yeah. to respond now to credit air to say, yeah, I worked with you in the studio on this song. Um, of course, you changed the song because you're an artist, you wrote some things, but we cannot take that away. And he also admitted in what he wrote that um, based on where he was in the industry at the time and his knowledge on intellectual property, yeah. there wasn't any signing. So yeah. if there was, he wouldn't have to be doing this explanation. He would just have to put this out there and yeah. say, this is what we signed. Again, there are cases where if, if you write a song for someone and they outrightly buy the song of you, you're not entitled to anything, not credit, no nothing. And so, um, since a million needs to really make it clear what exactly, I mean, whatever, th there's got to be some kind, there's got to be he some said kind, there was you know, and so, um, but, but not threatening him, do I think that's the way to go? No, I mean, um, he wrote, he wrote one of your biggest songs, and so he deserves all the accolades and credit he should get for that, and so resolving to threaten his life or whatever he should going to do to him afterwards, um, doesn't cut it. And this thing goes back to a whole lot of artists, a lot of artists, since a million is reading songs for, that they're not necessarily giving him the credit for. Big top names in Nigeria, female artists, and and when you ask him, he's so he's so the word is he's so um, he shrouds it a lot. Like you know, I cannot talk about it. And so, if it's an outright pay, you say they outrightly pay you, and so you can't talk anything about the song. But if you wrote it and um, both of you have a, have some kind of understanding or an NDA, you also say so. But I'm saying for most of the time, we feel at the end of the day in Nigeria, most Nigerian artists feel if somebody writes a song for you, it makes you less of an artist. International artists do it. They have songwriters. Not everybody who is a beautiful singer is a beautiful songwriter. And so Sister Millie is one of those artists who has written so many beautiful songs. So cover Sister Millie's song. But he released it for Whiskey. I mean, Whiskey, um, Sister Millie, and the rest of them did that song. But he would never come out and say, I did the song, I wrote the song. I think song, the news you know? about the, this topic for me is more about Bernard Boyle and Cizamili. Like, because Nigerians don't understand the idea or the art of songwriting and, and other people performing their music, I don't want to dwell on that. I think for me, the issue here is Bernard Boy and his attitude towards other people. Like, the way he interacts with other people is so disgusting. Um, first of all, if somebody writes your music, it's almost like he doesn't understand art. And I think, to a point, I'm beginning to see like he doesn't even understand himself. Bernard Boy is huge, huge, huge. But the more he talks about himself, it's like, it's kind of like a beautiful girl that has a nasty mouth. Like, you just start turning more ugly. It doesn't take away from the fact that you're still beautiful, but the way we see you is lesser. And I think that's what Bernard Boy is doing with himself right now. As an artist, you should surely understand that because somebody else wrote your mu the music for you, it doesn't take away from the fact that you still kill 
the performance. But he's so insecure in himself that he can't see that and he has to bring somebody down and then threaten the other person and then go on and make a rant. People write music all the time. And for him to come out and say it on the radio station that he wrote music for, for Burner Boy, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't think it's anything um, bad or like he said, it's trying to take away anything from, from Burner Boy. I, even people that ha I've seen, like Kerry Hilson, Neo, um, Sia, that writes for people, even when they have been paid off, they still say it. Yeah. Because that's their Which job. Is what I'm saying. Except, you have to have except your there is a non disclosure agreement that, there. Whether you are paid off and I don't know when or people are doing non disclosures for, for making music. I feel like that's even in itself illegal. I don't, it's only on this table that I'm hearing that you can do non disclosures for writing music because that's somebody's career. It's like saying that, oh, I'm a, I'm a makeup artist, but then I, I, I would sign away saying that I did your makeup for you. I've never heard that. So mm. there's nothing wrong with that. If the audience wants to stigmatize it and the artist wants to stigmatize, that's fine. 